Okay, so we've got some um, pretty nasty gaps we're going to take care of down here. Now, they're not too bad, I must admit. You know, I've seen a lot worse. But um, a few people have been asking on the forums about various things you can do with putties and things like that. So what I thought I'd show you is one little technique where you actually thin down the putty. Um, so what I've got here is what I tend to use. So I've just got some squadron green. This will work with most putties. So you stick it on there. Now normally, the way we would normally do it is you get yourself a piece of plastic card, something like that, and you smear it on and away you go. Which works very well, don't get me wrong. Um, but sometimes you just want to do a little area and just get in there. So if you take some um, cellulose thinners, for argument's sake, I've got some alkaline thinners, but any cellulose thinners or lacquer thinners, things like that, um, i.e. the chemical, the ones that really smell, they're the ones you want. Um, just take a little bit of the thinner, okay, and just put a few drops down onto there. And we've just done a few there. And then make sure you put your lid on this stuff once you've used it. And that way, if you do knock it over, you're not going to lose a lot and also the smell. Then what you do, take your brush, like so, and just bring you in a little bit. Okay, hold this up. Take your brush and just gently work it, and it will dissolve the putty. And then obviously, depending on how much you've got on there, it will make it very, very watery, and it will turn it into more of a, a liquid state. Now the beauty with this is two things. One, it will dry faster than if it was in its solid state because the thinners um, obviously evaporates a hell of a lot quicker than actually anything else. So you take it like this and just give it a good mix until you've got a, a paste that you're happy with to a consistency. Now the thing to remember is this will dry out very, very quickly. So you might have to add a little bit more thinners to it as you go. Okay, so basically, Thinners on the brush, just like that. We just bring you in a little bit. Okay, thinners on the brush, as we were saying, and all you do is literally just paint it on, and it'll sink nicely down into the recesses um, of what you want to take care of. Now, obviously, you can just dab it along, and you go along like that, and just build up a line, just like so. And as you notice, this top one is probably starting, is drying out already. And then what you can do, you can grab these other ones and you can literally push it up and smear it into the cracks. So we just bring you in, sorry. You can see that we just take it like this and the capillary action will sort of almost pull itself along. Just like so. And you can do nice little wing roots and things like this and because it's thin as I said it will run its way around then obviously you can go back to the first one and just give it another coat and you just build it up now obviously if you've got a very fine brush you can build this up very very quick so you just do it like that okay if we just do this other wing root okay now you might notice down here on the thing it's getting quite thick there we go, we just brush it on and take care of those little joints just going on down there and a little bit there. And say, so because it's like, a, if you imagine this works like a, a thick paint, you can literally just paint it onto joints. Just do it in there. Take care of it up there. And it works very well. Now, downsides to this really that is just shrinkage because what happens or can happen is that because obviously it's got thinners in it and various bits and pieces it can actually shrink back and you're left with a dip obviously where you've been so you need to plenty of it in there for it to, to work and what we do is it's going to be a two-stage setup you'll see in a moment we do but already we've dried and we've taken care of these gaps and then if you see a gap that sort of come back because of for whatever reason you can just literally paint in another coat. If you've got a hair dryer or an airbrush you can dry it off and away you go. So just keep working back and as you can see, I don't know if you can see this too well in here but it's drying, it's going like paint now. So we'll just give it a little bit more along there, just along here. So you say if that was the other one it would take a long long time to dry whereas this one doesn't take very long at all. And then if you've got an old paint pot like this one, just leave it on there, let it dry, come along with your thinners, put a drop in there, you can reactivate it and away you go again. So I've done that underneath there to take care of those that gap under there. And obviously we had quite nasty gaps 
on the top as well um, so I've done it again literally just gone along painted it up there we're just going to give it a little bit more whilst it's in this nice state I'm going to just go along paint it on exactly where we need it all the other gaps are fine so we're happy with that and we're just going to put it down and leave it now as I say drying times depends really how much you've got on there but if you give it a wang with a hair dryer and just blow it over it will dry it off now to clean out your brush if you use a nice brush literally just dunk it in the thinners take it straight out and then rub it and pull and you should find quite a nice clean brush but don't leave your paintbrush in the thinners too long otherwise it will actually start eating the paint off of the the colorants off of it but you just dab and pull but don't mix in there otherwise you end up putting dirt and thinners into your actual um, thinners itself so there we go that brush is all nice and clean and done lip boat goes back on you can just leave that to one side to dry off and use it again next time so we just need that to dry now um, quite nicely in there and then we'll come back and we'll show you the quick and fast way of getting rid of the excess around there because it's the painted side you could sand that in quite nicely it's not going to give you a massive lumps and bumps to sand on um, so that's quite a nice little touch with it and then what we can do we can go around then and just check all the seams and the gaps and bits and pieces afterwards so as that's drying the next thing we can do is actually work on putting the front nauticals onto this so sanding stick nice and flat just give it a rub right over the front and then obviously you've got these little joins in here so we just need to smooth them in so we just give a little thing just like that and then if we take the fronts, um, there isn't a left and right, it's pretty much on. So then what we can do is come along and we can fit, or attempt to fit, the mod. And they just click in, just like that, and you should find it's quite a nice little joint. If it's not, then you can just sand off lightly on the insides in here and make it to a better fit so it fits in. But you should find it's actually not a bad fit. You see, just get this one in. But there we go that's one in like that and then your other one will go in on the other side which needs a bit of a, a nudge but it goes in there and there's our engine bays on and done just like that and then what we'll all do is obviously because of you know we don't want us getting um, dirty and things we'll keep the engine covers nice and closed and we can use a bit of blue tack wrong way around there is a left and a right there we go and there we go that will sit on there so we can paint up all the rest of it and not worry about it and then afterwards obviously we'll be in this nice position where we can have it as an open state just like this so people can see that nice little bit of work we did down there okay so phase two you take your cellulose thinners and we're going to come in and I've already done one side we're going to do the other now so basically take your cotton bud if you get a good quality one it works a lot better these are quite cheap so they tend to fall apart okay put your thinners on your cotton bud and then wipe now the thing is with using the thinners is it's going to remelt obviously the the actual uh, filler and then you can wipe it away downside is it's also going to melt the plastic so be careful how long and how hard you rub as long as it's fluid i.e. you've got plenty of filler on there you should be okay but as you can see here we're rubbing all that nasty excess out but it's staying in the joints when you're looking like you're running out of thinners and it's starting to stick and drag a bit just grab a bit onto your cotton bud and redo it okay and then all we do we just keep wiping around but just keep thinners on your cotton bud because as I say as soon as your thinners runs out it's going to stick and you're going to drag your actual uh, the, the plastic will get caught and it will make a mess and everything else so you've got to keep thinners on it you'll notice as soon as you haven't because it will start to drag and it will affect your paintwork and all sorts so there we go we just wipe it all round just like that okay once you're done give it a quick blow and there we go it's job done. Very, very easy, very, very straightforward. 
thing is, allow for shrinkage. It's going to pull in and it's going to shrink slightly and dry back. Now don't go banging in there with your, um, your files and try and sand any of this because for a few hours it's going to make the plastic quite soft and quite tacky so you have to avoid it. But as you can see I've done down in here which is a great way because it's a curve it's very hard to get in there. Once you've done a very fine sanding I um, basically you could use paper or a sponge and just lightly sand off everywhere on there. You might have to go around and do some details again because it will have softened all the panel lines. The other thing you have to be slightly wary of is when you're doing it, if you're using a very soft styrene, um, it does tend to melt it quite quickly as well. So there's little things you have to be careful of as you're doing it. But it's a quick and easy way of getting in there in an area where you can't sand and fill. If you're using an area where it's flat and you can get into, perhaps around the tail here, you'd be better off using actually your files and your sanding sponges. But certainly in your areas like wing roots, like in here, if I give a quick demonstration on these top ones, um, it's a lot easier. But as I say, secret to this, plenty of thinners. And say so the minute you start, um, you know, your thinners is running out, is the second that you're going to have trouble. So as soon as it starts to drag, you know, then it's time to really get a fresh cotton bud with more thinners on it and away you go. Like there, we're starting to drag. On we go, dunk into the thinners, thinners on there. But we can get in there, get in the wing roots, all the other bits and pieces, and we can just rub it away. And then just keep yourself 90 degrees to everything, just like that. Okay, and as I say, don't go back in there and try and mop up all these bits and pieces. Um, you really just want to let it do its bit. But as you can see in there, we've got it all out. No problem at all. Let that dry. Give it a blow. And as I say, you might need a second coat on there because it will shrink back down. But as I say, it's a quick, very easy way of doing it, especially on wing roots. You know, this area underneath, it would be a nightmare to try and sand in there. But it's done it very quickly. Um, very efficiently. Okay, so we're giving it some time now. Um, so what I've actually done is usual thing, gone around with acrylic, put it over the top. Two things, one, it'll neutralize with any like um, any further sort of eating of the plastic and the bits and pieces. Now obviously we have lost a few little panel lines in there obviously, so we're gonna have to scribe back in, but certainly as you can see this one on the back here um, is a lot better than it was. And then obviously down in here would have been a complete nightmare. So it's just a quick and easy way um, as you can see, these up here, they might need another coat in there yet, as I say, it's all still wet, but these major joints, which would have been a bit of a headache to do, um, are now done and fine. So what we're going to do now is install the engine bay on top, and then if needed be, we can come back and do exactly the same way. So this is just going to sit straight on the top, just like that. We can glue that into position now. Um, I'm not going to put the tails on for a moment, because they tend to get in the way when you you know, basically try to sort things out in bits and pieces, so we'll stick them on last. But we'll get the actual engine nauticals now put into position. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the tail planes are actually on there now. Slight accident while sanding here. I've managed to take some of the silver work off, so I'm going to have to respray that in. Um, we've actually smoothed in the actual joins. Um, I used a tiny bit of super glue on a cocktail stick, push it in, let it dry, and just sand it off with those ones, which is quite an easy and way to do it. The joins here, we've got the acrylic paint on. As we were saying, they're all basically dry now. So if I zoom you in, we can have a look at some of these key areas to see what we've actually done. Um, as I say, these joins in here, by using with the filler and then, you know, obviously making it into more of a paste, it's easier to get it in than when we can wipe off the actual, the excess of it. So that's a, a very nice, easy way of doing it down in these joins here, which are taking care of that. Same ones with around the tail here. Where are we? There you go. Um, totally seamless. What I am going to do is probably pop the panel lines back in and have to re-rivet those areas. The same as actually under this area here as well. Um, then obviously when you're up looking in these uh, wing roots, um, that we've got here um, as we were saying you know it's a very hard tricky one to do because obviously you've got flat areas you're 90 degrees to the corners so in some ways it's quite nice and an easy way of doing it with the filler but as I said off camera it did take three coats to actually do it because there was the shrinkage that I was worried about um, another way to do it which we'll talk about in the next build is actually using um, super glue and a kicker to, to, as a filler instead so in this one we've used a sort of you know a liquidy fine putty next build we do i'll actually show you using the actual super glue as a filler 
Um, there we go, I've redone the top ones as well um, up on this engine area which we were worried about. So what we can do now is basically go right the way around the actual model itself and take care of any seams and lines and re-scribing that we need to do absolutely everywhere on there. I'm just going to give it a sand round. Um, I won't bore you to death with obviously showing you with the scribing and everything else because we've covered that in other things. Um, but basically check over the entire model everywhere um, and look because uh, the way the actual moulding is done with these um, there's a, a join runs down here um, and it's a join line of obviously the mould so I've removed it totally and sanded it in and I'm going to pop a new panel line in there that's going to meet up with the join line from that nose wheel and run it all the way down so I'm going to do that one but as I say look over your actual your riveting detail because you'll notice when it's on a curve the actual pin marks come in from the side and sometimes the wash doesn't take very well so it's just as easy to pop, pop around with a needle or something like that and just gently tap in all the ones and I know there's literally hundreds and hundreds you'd have to do on this but if you wanted to do it right just take your time work them all over as you say I've redone all these ones on the top areas all along here as well but I've certainly got to do some more work down the back here and the underside as well so as soon as we've done that we can get the canopy sorted out we can get the heads up display in various bits and pieces you might notice I haven't actually put the refueling door in yet um, there's a good reason for that I'm you know, very, very worried about it being a tail sitter. A quick way of testing, put your finger, lay it across obviously where the undercarriage is, stick it on your finger and see what happens. And as you can see, it's actually leaning back. So I'm gonna take the, obviously we've got, you know, obviously the seat's gotta go in and various ordnance which are gonna be forward, but I'm not gonna take any chances. So what I'm gonna actually do is add a little bit more lead deliberately straight down in there. I'm gonna super glue it in place. And then I know for a fact it's not going to be a tail sitter, um, but it was the concern that I didn't have enough in there. Um, but I'm hoping now that you know, obviously, having leaving that open was a good idea, and it was. I'll roughly work out some weights for you, and I'll pop them on the forum at the end. Okay, we've just installed the HUD um, using basically I've got a pair of the Tamiya. Um, photo etch tweezers quite handy because they're flat and they're easy to bend around so if you want to invest in if you're doing lots of PE work photo etch work um, it might be worth investing in a pair of these um, available from all usual shops but I know um, relish models and things like that on the site um, have them um, but they're great because they're flat they don't tend to curve your parts of various bits and pieces and you can make nice little right angles and various um, degrees with them which is quite handy and it's great for doing HUDs problem is though when you fit the HUD and you put it down and you get it all lined up and you super glue it in place like I did and then I painted it black cut out the clear parts for the actual the glass work in the HUD and it doesn't fit it's too thin so plan B got the clear part um, from the plastic um, from the actual the box itself that the resin parts came in and I've used that in some ways it's quite nice it's thicker as it is in real life it's very thick glass that it's actually used so what we are actually do we've got that glued in and it's drying now so then we can just come along and we can start to fit the actual front windscreen onto the actual model and then we can let that dry and then we can line it up with the back one. So we do it the same as we do all the other ones. Put the back part in first. Make sure you're all nice and clear. Run your finger in it. Make sure you don't leave any fingerprints and then just basically, I'll use my jumper here, but clear, give it a bit of a polish. That way if you get any dirt in there, you can, you know, you can actually you'll see it from the inside quite easily and it might be a bit of a pain in the, the proverbial to try and get it out if you've got a big heads up display like we've got in there. Using Gator glue, any good quality PE, don't use Yoohoo type wood glues because they tend to dry hard and then turn yellow. Um, that's my only bit of advice for doing these things. But basically, I know you've seen me do this a million times but I'll show you again. On like that, then I literally cocktail stick and then just roll it backwards to make a nice even amount of glue on there don't go overboard with this stuff because we don't want it running up the inside although this dries incredibly clear and it's one of the reasons I like it so much you don't have any risk of fogging any other bits and pieces so basically we hold it like this coming from the side and I can show you and then we push it up to the back part and then push down okay and if you're happy with how it's all lining up you can just remove the back part. Okay, in there like that. We'll let that start to bite, let it start to grip just a little bit for the moment, and then what we'll do is we'll come along with a bit more um, of the glue and just run it along any cracks that you've got on the front, perhaps any little areas, and you can just touch in any little holes you've got 
with the glue just like that then continue to let it dry and before it's totally dry you come along with a cotton bud wet it and wipe off all the excess glue that's hanging around anywhere but basically we just want to make sure we're all in there nicely done but it doesn't take long to dry this stuff this is why i like it if you're using sometimes the normal glue it tends you knock it and it slips it's quite grippy as soon as this stuff gets to work um, it bites and holds it into place quite nicely. I know it's really designed for sort of um, other things, but it works great on clear parts because, as I say, if it does dry, totally clear, you don't have to worry about it. I know there's other things on the market um, and there's other products. So we just wet up here and we just pull it around. But as I say, you know, you tend to stick with what you know works well. And I've been using this now for the last couple of months. And I do like the way it actually works and it's easy to clean up. It's great for photo etch parts, I must admit, on things like, um, you're actually, when you're doing uh, uh, instrument panels and you've got the photo etch part and you sandwich it together, the great thing is if you're using, um, obviously, a CA glue, you put it together, whilst it dries lovely, you can't manoeuvre it. So if you put it in the wrong place and it does bite, you, you know, you have to pull it off. And when you try and pull it off, it bends nightmare. Use this stuff, blob in there, you can move it around, get it into position, you can squash it, you can do whatever you like, and you know you've got a few minutes before it's going to start to grip. And then once you're all nicely lined up, you can just leave it to do its own thing. And away you go. So that's looking lovely. I'm very happy with that. So what we're going to do now is very nicely leave that completely to one side to dry off totally. And then say what we can do, once that glue is dried on there, we can go along, give it a little bit more everywhere, wipe off the excess glue that you've got um, and that will take care of any gaps and any other little bits and pieces so keep your photo etch parts safe off the one side so why is that is all totally drying like that we're going to crack on and we're going to get the undercarriage all built okay added more lead into the nose um, section as you can imagine there's quite a bit in there now i'm going to roughly do a calculation and i'll pop it on the forum um, undercarriage goes together very very straightforward um, for those of you who've seen the a10 build uh, the photo build of the Italia one, you'll know I've got in all the brake lines myself um, using fuse wire. Um, this one is a lot more straightforward because it's all pre-moulded and to be honest, it's very nicely done. Uh, so that's that done. I've done the doors as well, so they're all on board. Um, obviously, um, yes, this is going to need painting up, but I'm going to do it all white and then the outside parts for these gear doors, um, I'll just spray by hand or paint, hand paint, probably be a lot quicker and easier. Um, next thing to go on, we're going to put on the actual pay tack um, designator or viewer um, which is going to go on the side here so literally you've got a couple of location tabs we're just going to make sure they fit nicely which they do extra thin just a blob quite a nice blob in the middle and we'll let it spread itself out when that's stuck on so we just hold that there for a sec um, I've mocked up putting the undercarriage on just to see how much of a tail sitter this is actually going to be um, and to be honest it's fine now uh, but as I say a bit concerned about the weight isn't mentioned in the instructions at all um, I thought it would be because without it this will sit back even with that gun on board um, I know we haven't put it on and we were saying about it I don't know if anybody else has built it and noticed it afterwards uh, right so we're putting the fuel filler door as I say the extra lead has all gone in there so hopefully this will just sit down nicely in there which it isn't if I'm honest so what we do we're just going to lift this up a couple of strokes just to sand off a little bit at the top I can actually see a tiny little join just there and we one just in here so we just nick them out the way and then we go we'll try that again Better. So there we go, that's in. So what we'll do now, we'll come along with our extra thin. I'm just going to whip a line around that just to seal this in place now. There's a bit of a gap at the front there that might need just a touch of something or other. Put a little bit of filler, we're just filling it up. So there we go, that's the nose section on, and we're basically all ready now. Uh, this front canopy is totally dry. It did have another little bit of glue going around it, so I'm going to glue, um, not glue, but actually um, put on the actual, um, this canopy and put it into position um, as it goes on there now. Um, the canopy itself was quite a nice fit. 
um, and it goes on there very, very nicely. Uh, we're going to have it opened up anyway, so we'll be in the open position, something like this. But we'll put a bit of glue on there. A quick sand down of this edge just down here where it's a little bit rough. We're going to check it all over, everything else like that. And then what we're going to do, we're going to get these well, uh, wheel wells sprayed up white. So they're all done. We're going to get this front, um, sorry, it's going to be out a little bit. You might be able to see what we're doing. So we're going to get the wheel wells all sprayed white. We'll get this front area put on for the actual refueler door there. Um, and we can go around, have a quick check over, quick sand around everything else. And then we can start on and get some paint and primer onto the model. Right, okay, we're in with the black paint. We're quite happy everything is okay everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is literally pop around just with a little bit of black paint, do this canopy section as we always do so it looks black from the inside. I'm also gonna do the fan blades. And whilst I've got some black paint on the go, I'm just gonna pop around some of those joints, which I'm a little bit worried about before we even get in there with the primer. So we're just gonna dust this on. This is neat Tamiya flat black. And it's at a very high air pressure. It's about 35, 40 psi. So that's why it's looking a bit speckly and horrible. But as I say, it's just to pop this on so it can do its bit. So what we're going to do is just check the centre seam running down the back, the spine of this. It joins obviously where the engines. Uh, duct system is on. Obviously this wing root complete section I want to have a good look at. So we just do this in here. And say so don't panic about all of this because we're going to chuck primer over the top of it anyway so nobody's going to see it. Uh, the fuel filler door area because I wanted to see what that join looked like so we're just going to spray up that black in there as well. Give the canopy another coat. Okay fan blades. Sounds funny but I'm going to do in black. Bit of an awkward angle to get to. What I'll do with these fan blades, I'm going to make a paper mask and mask them up that way, I think will be the easiest. So that's those, and just on the underside, we'll check these underside areas, the entire length center seam. And one thing that I've noticed, it's sort of quite apparent already doing this, is that there's quite a lot of release agent, I think, left on the parts because it's bubbling up already and seeing as this is neat, it shouldn't in theory be doing that. So that's that. Okay, we'll just check these joins on the wing tips there and these back ones. As I say, we're not pre-shading or anything here, we're just literally doing this to check out lines, seams, joins, making sure we're all happy how it's sitting, how all the parts are, just before we get in there with a the primer, because we have done certainly a lot, a bit more work than we would normally do um, to this particular kit. Canopy. Right, okay, we'll just let that dry for a moment and clean out the airbrush. <laughs> 